Welcome back to Draw Every Day with JJK. Again, my name is Jarrett. I go by JJK. This is the eighth Friday of our show. We've been doing this show every weekday for two months. This is our 40th episode, which is wild. I mean, I thought, you know, we were going to do two weeks and we'd all get back to our regular lives, but here we are, we're still drawing and thank goodness that we can draw and that we can make art because uh, it is so much fun. It is escapism. Uh, it always makes me feel better about life to make marks on a page. And I hope that you felt the same way too. So going forward, I'm going to be making a fewer episodes per week, about two or three episodes per week, mostly because I have books that I need to get done. I have a lot of book deadlines uh, that have been mounting up but I don't want to abandon this show. I have had so much fun drawing with all of you. So we're gonna keep drawing. I'm gonna be, I hope you all are gonna to continue to draw every day. I'll be drawing every day, but we will be on YouTube a few times a week. And we're gonna keep the show going, like, like forever, I think. I mean, even when things are all back to chill and the way things should be, I'm having so much fun, I'm gonna keep this going. So today, I thought what I would do is I would take some inspiration from the shapes I'm seeing in nature to invent some characters. So I have a big old piece of, a big old pad of newsprint here, and I have some various crayons. I'm gonna take a look at some of the shapes I see around me and hope that triggers some brainstorming and some ideas in my head. And yeah, yeah, I see. I see a lot of trees, of course, because there are a lot of tall trees around here. So I'm going to give them all some faces. And I see two trees over there where one tree is leaning towards the other tree. And maybe they're in love. Ah, oh, okay. Let's grab a new piece of paper. I love newsprint because it's inexpensive and it's big. Get a lot of it without feeling like you're, you don't, there's no pressure, right? Because this is an expensive paper that you can just mess around and have fun with it. All right, you know, this also, this area back here is where we bring our Christmas trees when Christmas is over. So there's something, uh, kind of nice and not sad in a sad way as much as I want to say just wistful when we see these old trees um, because they 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 you know they we have such great memories attached to them and uh, they're back here they're they're becoming one with the earth again so let me draw Christmas tree that all the needles have fallen off but feeling happy with memories of a holiday gone by Let's put one. I'm going to put one candy cane there. I'm going to have the character with their eyes open looking up at the candy cane. OK. 
Okay, let's grab another piece of paper here. And let me take a quick look around. I am seeing a lot of uh, greenery starting to come up on the ground. And in, in just a month's time, this area, you know, it's very, a lot of browns here, but in a month's time, it's going to be extremely green. And since they're baby greens, I'll give them big eyes. And they're hopeful for the future. They're ready to sprout. Okay, let's make another turkey. Let me take a look around me. See what I see. Oh, I see some rocks over there. And, there's, and it's very dry right now, but typically there's a stream that comes through here. And also, I see some hikers. And I hear some hikers. Imagine if you were just hiking in the woods and you saw someone with a drafting table doing a YouTube show. Would, that, would you think that was weird? Or just that's just what happens when you live in an artsy town? Some random dude with a drafting table talking to himself. They don't know I'm making a YouTube show. I mean, they might see the microphone and the tripod, but... Hey there, how are you? Hey, it's Mr. LR. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually my friends. Hey, guys. <laughs> Good. I'm doing well. Awesome. Yeah. I'm just making my 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 show. Oh, awesome. That's you the... go watch it. <laughs> <It's gonna> be... <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I heard hikers and I was like, "Wait, how's your dog doing?" What's that? How's your dog? Uh, I rode a high school about yesterday. Uh, I <laughs> How old is she now? A little less than a year. Oh, that's awesome. That's uh, that, the first couple years are tough. Those pup, those puppy years are they're cute, but that's tough. That's so. It's good to see you guys. Be well. Happy birthday to Kira too. All right, I see some rocks over there, and I'm going to. So typically, there's a stream right here. But again, it's very dry. And I'm thinking about those big boulders. They are just chilling out, typically by the water. So I'm going to imagine if there was water there. Now, if you notice when I'm making characters look content, I have their eyes closed and down like so. Now, rocks, rocks have been around for a while, so I'm going to give these rocks little crow's feet. Little as little wrinkles that appear right here when you smile a lot. They're just from being happy all the time. At least that's what we tell ourselves, right, grown-ups?
So that is how, this is what I imagine these rocks feel like. All right, I'm gonna call an artist friend of mine in just a bit, but before I do, let's check in with those pugs. It is time for pug camp. Now, I love running into my friends as they hike through the woods, uh, but sometimes I miss my artist friends I don't get to see all the time. And one artist friend whose work that I really, really love is Ethan Aldridge. This graphic novel, is Strange, this is beautiful, and there's a follow-up book as well, but start with The Strange. This is the very first one. And, you know, one character is from the human world, one character is from... Uh, the, like the fairy world, the underground fairy world, but they're swapped at birth and they look a lot like one another. Let me show you some artwork from these, from this estranged by Ethan, Ethan M. Aldridge. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous watercolor, pen and ink watercolor. I can't even imagine how much work Ethan puts into these, these graphic novels. Uh, beautifully illustrated. Great story, great pacing, definitely has the vibe of like the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, your, your classic fantasy novel told via a, a graphic novel set in contemporary times. Uh, just action-packed, uh, could not recommend the series enough. Uh, like, it's just fantastic. So we're going to call Ethan up on the old banana phone, which is uh, seeing better days because uh, it's the end of the week. Um, and you know, we have a lot of leftover bananas. So it's, it's gonna be time for some more banana bread soon. Have y'all been making banana bread? We've been making a lot of banana bread. So uh, let's call up our friend Ethan and check in with him. Ethan Aldridge, thank you so much for being on Draw Every Day with JJK. Hi, Jarrett. Hello, everyone. My name is Ethan Aldridge, and today I wanted to give you all a look on how I paint Cinder, one of the main characters from my graphic novel series, Estranged. So I use watercolor to create all of my comics. Uh, these are some original watercolor paintings from my current project, which is a short comic called Troll Apple Pancakes. Uh, and I paint all these by hand. I, I draw with a waterproof brown ink, like a sepia ink. Uh, and from there, I do washes of watercolor over the top until it's got the kind of color I want. So today, uh, I wanted to show you guys how I paint Cinder from my comic book series. So here is a drawing that I did earlier today. Uh, like I said, I sketched it out with pencil first, and then I used a pen like this, one of those old-fashioned dip pens, to ink the drawing. And then from here, we're going to paint it. So here's my little travel watercolor set. That's what it looks like. As you can see, it's pretty messy. I'm not always very good about cleaning up after I work. I'm a messy painter. Now, Estranged is a modern fairy tale about two boys who were switched to birth. One is a fairy kid in secret, and the other one is a human kid. The human kid is taken to live underground by the fairy king and queen, and the prince is left in his place, but magic to look like the human child so that the, par the parents don't notice. Um, and so this is the, the fairy child. Uh, the first, his name is Cinder, but uh, he goes by Edmund for a lot of the first book. The first thing I do when I paint is I start with the warmest, lightest colors first, and then work through the spectrum until I get to the darkest, coolest colors. So his skin is the, is the lightest, warmest color. So that's gonna be the first thing we do. As you can see, I'm not using too much paint. It's pretty light at this point. I'll keep it that way for a while. When I work on the actual paintings from my comics, I'll 
put on layer after layer after layer of color until I get the exact right tone that I want. Um, I've drawn Cinder so many times now and painted him so many times that I have a pretty good feel for what that is. So I can do it much quicker than I used to. With Cinder, uh, I wanted to have a lot of his character design reflect his personality. He can have sort of a bad temper sometimes, and so he's a little spiky looking to sort of suggest that he can he can be a little spiky in terms of his personality. Uh, I also kind of wanted him to look sort of very sharp and otherworldly and fey. And so a lot of that went into his design. And here, we're kind of seeing him in his costume that he wears when he's living in the underground fairy world. Uh, like I said, he's sort of an exiled prince, but at one point he does get to come back and see what it would be like to be a prince, uh, and so he needs a good outfit to match. One of my favorite parts of drawing the estranged comics was getting to design everyone's costumes and outfits and, and design all the different little creatures and monsters that live in the world below. Um, I looked at a lot of fashion magazines, a lot of uh, cool outfits from reference books that I have that I wanted to do stuff like. I wanted stuff that looked pretty and cool and also weird, and it kind of suggested um, kind of a classic fantasy. So he's got kind of this royal gold and red jacket, and I put these little uh, shoulder pads and, and his uh, leg guards to kind of suggest armor, as if he was a knight of some kind. From here, we're going to switch to a slightly bigger brush to the red of his jacket. His color palette also uh, was something I put a lot of thought into. Like I said, he was magic to look like the human child, whose name is Ed. Uh, and so because that, the two main characters have the same face. They look like twins. And so I wanted to make sure that even though some of the other characters might be confused as to who they're talking to, I didn't want the reader to ever be confused. So it was important to me to be able to have the reader be able to quickly tell at a glance which character this was. And so how I did that was by picking colors that I thought suited their personality. Like I said, Cinder can have a bit of an explosive personality, so he's painted in a lot of uh, vivid reds and yellows. Whereas uh, the human child, Ed, he can be kind of quiet and more reserved. So if you look at the book, you'll see that he's painted in mostly like dark blues and grays to kind of give you that feeling, and then to also set them apart. Whenever you see them, even if they're wearing different outfits, their outfits are all kind of that same uh, color palette. And it kind of helps the reader tell a little more easily who it is they're looking at. It helps me too, because sometimes when you're drawing comics all day, every day, and you draw the same characters again and again, it's a little easy for me to get confused as to who I'm drawing, especially in the early stages of the drawing. The reason I work with watercolor in these comics is because I'm also trying to give the reader the feeling that they're reading a classic fairy tale. A lot of very old-fashioned fairy tale books, uh, the illustrations were done using a similar technique to what I'm using right now. It, uh, it was illustrators who would use uh, waterproof ink and then do just layer after layer after layer after watercolor. I learned a lot from, from studying those illustrators. Uh, illustrators like Arthur Rackham, or John Bauer, or Edmund Dulac. So there's the reds. And then from here, we're going to do uh, the fire that he's kind of conjuring out of his hand in greens. Now obviously fire isn't normally green, but that's kind of what's neat about doing fantasy is you can do these little things that are a little unexpected color-wise kind of make it seem more dreamlike and unreal. I think a lot about how color influences mood, how color and design can tell you a lot of story about the character before they even say anything. When you're designing a character, that's something that's always good to think about, is what does their outfit, what does their hair, what does the shoes they're wearing, what does it say about them? Why would that character pick out those clothes specifically? I 
we're going to put a little more green for some moss down here in the stone just to kind of sketch it in. And then we'll fill in the blacks. His hair is very spiky, which means there's like lots of little teeny bits I kind of have to fill in with the paint. Which is kind of fun. I like I like doing those weird little detail bits. Uh, whenever I design characters, I always try to keep them simple, but I always end up adding in little spikes or swirls or things that are just fun for me to draw. That's the other part of designing characters, is not only should the character design be able to tell a story, but it should be fun for you to draw too. Especially if you're doing comics, you're going to have to draw that character again and again and again, and so it's always best to make sure that it's something that you like drawing and that you would feel happy drawing uh, over and over. I've drawn this character and his family for over two books now, so I'm pretty comfortable being able to do it. Another part of Cinder's character design was that I wanted to include a lot of little references to classic fairy tales. Um, he's a changeling, which is, which is, like I said earlier, something about where the fairy parents will steal human children and replace them with their own. And in old fairy tales where that happened, there was a lot of little clues that were supposed to tell you if a person was a changeling. A lot of those clues are a little silly. Uh, but there was things that some people believed. So for example, uh, it was believed that if you were left-handed, you might be a fairy changeling. And so uh, Cinder is left-handed, whereas his brother Ed is right-handed. Uh, another one is in uh, some parts of the world, like in Iceland, uh, fairy stories say that you can always tell a troll changeling apart from uh, a normal human, because while they were able to kind of disguise themselves as whatever they wanted, there was always one part they couldn't change, and it was usually that they had a, a big fuzzy cow tail, like how Cinder has here. Uh, and so I tried to incorporate a lot of that into his design, so that it kind of had that feeling of something classic and mythic. I'm going to do a little bit of blue here for the stone. I don't want just like a, a pure black for that. It can make it a little more interesting. You can see how that's a dark blue there. And we use that same blue on the book he's reading. So that's the flat colors, and then just really quickly, we're going to add a little bit of shadow from the fire that he's using. I'm using that kind of same blue from the stone, actually, because it's kind of a nice soft blue. Keep it pretty simple.
that's it. Thank you so much for having me on, Jarrett, and thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, keep on drawing, everyone. I can't wait to see what you all make. Bye. Well, Ethan, thank you so much for drawing with us today, giving us that amazing watercolor demonstration. I know I learned a lot. And that's the thing about being an artist. You're never done learning, you're never done growing, and you're always going to learn from your peers and other artists. And I've learned so much from everyone out there drawing. You all have amazed me with how much you use the lessons I put out there. And I've seen so much growth in the artwork that you all sent in. And, and you have been sending artwork in from all across the globe. India, Paris, Spain, all over the United States, up there in Canada, down there in South America. I love it. So keep drawing. I'm going to keep drawing with you. I will see you next week. In the meantime, check out this incredible artwork that has been sent in by grown-ups. Grown-ups continue to get that artwork into me at studiojjk.com and I will continue to share it with all of us so we can just be so inspired by what we're doing. See you soon. Please click like and subscribe and keep drawing. See you soon.